Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I will be analyzing the company of Ehang Holdings Limited, which is trading in the Nasdaq under the ticker symbol EH. To as always hopefully help create a good enough picture analyzing several different aspects to help us determine whether this could present us with a good opportunity of investment or not. Also before I start, I just want to mention that I initially got to know about this company only this past week thanks to a video that Matthew Huo published, so a big shout out to him, um, he, he did a great job analyzing the company. Uh, in today's video and after having done a lot of analysis myself, I will be presenting the company in my own way and also giving hopefully some more insights to add also to the video that Matthew published, um, so I just hope that you enjoy it. Firstly though, let's quickly define the structure of the video. We will start with a short introduction to the company and we will also be seeing the different applications that the drones that Ehang produces are used for. Then we will be looking at some very exciting news for the company and also the industry potential that it has. Then as always, we'll be analyzing the financials of it and also we will be comparing it with its main competitors out there. And finally, as always, I will be giving my personal opinion on the stock and I will also be sharing why is it that I already own it in my portfolio and I'm certainly planning on adding more shares of it in the future. So with that said, and after I remind you that if you enjoyed this video, which took hours to make, it would help me out massively. If you could just give it a like, let's go for it. Ehang Holdings is a Chinese company that basically designs and manufactures drones and they don't only get their revenue from selling these drones but also from services that they offer related with this that we will see in more detail at a later stage. However, these drones are not just regular drones and they are a bit special and have several different uses. Probably the most revolutionary one of all is that they can transport up to two people at once inside the drone, which is very cool. But then as I said, there are other applications such as for instance, they can be used to control traffic. So basically to put your fines if you're driving too fast, then also to deliver packages. So in the logistics sector as well for emergency responses to for instance, control fires. And then also they are used for media entertainment. So kind of like fireworks, but to do shows in the air with drones. Let's though go now and have a look at the different drones that we are talking about and the characteristics of this. And we will start I think with the passenger ones because maybe they are the most attractive and I think also revolutionary. So as you can see in the image on the screen, there are two different models, the Ehang 216 that can transport up to two people, while the Ehang 116 only one person. I will now focus on the 216 because I think that the fact that two people can go inside makes it more attractive, but you also have the details of the other one on the side. So on it, it can reach a maximum speed of 130 kilometers an hour and it's designed flight time with maximum payload, which in this case is of 220 kilograms, which maybe is still a bit limited, but okay for two people certainly, is of 21 minutes. In terms of distance in kilometers, this is of 35 kilometers and it can go to an altitude up to 3000 meters above the sea level and it takes less than two hours to fully charge it. From this data, what is still missing a bit from my side, although I do understand that we are still at very early stages in this, would be that it has longer range and that it can also fly for more minutes um, because at currently only 21 minutes seems a bit limited depending on which operations or things need to be done. But also we need to consider that this information is extracted from their annual report of 2019. And in case you're wondering, no, the one from 2020 still has not come out. So that's why I'm using that one. But I'm sure that certainly there have been improvements on this side. Other than this though, as I was saying before, they also have other drones that are much smaller in size and that can be used for other aspects such as we said before, fire extinguishment support or surveillance or you know delivering packages. And at this point, feel free to check the specific characteristics of each by pausing this video, but if not, we will move on. At this moment, if you had never heard of these drones before, First and very important, just to confirm, yes, these things are already flying and it's not just some kind of prototype out there. And in fact, uh, until this, the March of this past year, 2020, they had already done more than 4,000 trials of, with passenger flights in China, Europe and the US. 
Secondly, your main concern if you're watching will probably be the restrictions and also the permits needed in order to fly these things you know, around the city, around the air, and for this to really get extended all over the world. And although we cannot deny that there is still a very long road ahead of us, Ehang has already made some progress. As you can see, they obtained flight permits for the passenger autonomous aerial vehicle from China, the Federal Administration of Aviation in the US, and also the Civil Aviation Authority in Norway. More recently, they also obtained the first operational flight permit in Canada. In general, China of course is more likely to adopt these type of vehicles faster as they already showed support towards urban air mobility and Ehang also being a Chinese company, I mean it's very likely to develop faster but I do think also that these type of vehicles at some point will also get extended to Europe, the US and eventually just the rest of the world. Talking about this, the recent news already show an interest from Europe in testing these kind of vehicles and hopefully also introducing them at some point, as Enhang will take part in the European Union project of air mobility urban large experimental demonstration, in which basically they will perform flight operations in Spain, the UK, the Netherlands, which is a great step. But actually, Ehang will also take part in two other projects of the European Union, one that aims to test the use of these drones in healthcare, and the second one which is focused around developing and integrating unmanned aerial vehicle operations in the urban airspace. But that's not it, because Ehang has also been selected by the French authorities to be a key member in implementing urban air mobility in the city of Paris, especially focusing on the Olympic Games which will take place there in 2024. Other than this, some other exciting news around the company are the partnership with DHL to provide delivery services in China and also the one with Vodafone that will provide 5G in order to manage the urban airspace mobility in the future in Europe. In terms of the industry, if what we have been saying or showcasing right now is not enough proof that there is really an interest from authorities and different playouts out there uh, in autonomous air mobility and also that this has a lot of potential. According to Morgan Stanley Research, the autonomous urban aircraft market could be worth $1.5 trillion in 2040, while at the moment it is basically close to $0 worth. And to end with this section on the industry and also news, Carmignac, which is a European asset management company, invested $40 million in a hang just a few weeks ago. After this, let's go into some numbers of the company. And firstly, I think that some very relevant ones are the sales for the passenger drones that we were mentioning before. And for this, in 2018, they only sold three of these. Then in 2019, they sold 61 of these. And so far, this 2020, until we have data, which is September 30th of this past year, they had already sold 48 units, which I think that shows a pretty positive trend in the fact that they are getting gradually more and more orders. Of course, this is still very limited, but it's also important to acknowledge that they said that they will be building another factory to increase the production of this. At this point, let's also compare the revenues by the different segments of their business. And as we said before, more or less, there are basically three ones, three main ones. First, we have the air mobility solutions, which are basically the passenger drones. Then we have the smart city management solutions, which uh, is the sale of other drones. As far as I understand, you know, regarding what we mentioned before of traffic management, uh, logistics and other type of things. And finally, we have the use of drones for the aerial media solutions, which is what we said before of making kind of like shows in the air and uh, essentially basically like fireworks. And as you can see, the evolution has been very positive, especially of the passenger drones, which in 2019 made 70% of the total revenue, while this had been much lower during the previous year. Also in terms of revenues per region, although in the year 2019 there were some by Europe, North America and West Asia, still most of them come from China, which is also kind of understandable. Going into the income statement and comparing the revenues since 2017, you can see in the image the evolution, with of course incredible growth, Also, although also understandable as the companies are still at relatively early stages, and we also see that this 2020 
Although again, we only have data from the first nine months, this already surpassed the full year 2019, so I would also expect for this 2020 important growth. But looking at the final results, the company is still not profitable and has been reporting losses, although it is also important to notice that they have been reducing them, proportionally speaking, when comparing them with the revenues. Still though, I think that this is not something to be worried about because as we saw earlier, they are getting a lot of funding from different entities, uh, there's a lot of interest and the fact that they are reporting losses at the moment should not worry or does, does not worry at least me at all. And also because of course this company is looking at the next 10, 15 to 20 years, so it's in the looking at the long run and not at the immediate results that they are reporting right now, which is again at very early stages. Afterwards, looking at the balance sheet, which is dated September 30th this past year, we see that it looks very, very good with a debt ratio of only 40.52%, which is very conservative. Now it's time to talk about competitors. And when it comes to passenger drones, Ehang is one of the leading companies out there, although there are also very large players, especially talking about Boeing, Airbus, or Lockheed Martin, that all of these three aerospace companies have also a division of drones. In fact, these three big players would be the main competitors that I see at the moment with a hang as they are already producing other types of aircrafts and of course they are much larger in size. On the other hand, they also have kind of like the disadvantage that these big players have many different divisions and maybe they don't put as much emphasis on drones as a hang is putting as it's focusing its activity only on that. Other competitors in the drone space are a Giggle Aerial Systems, although these ones are mostly focused on drones for agricultural purposes. And now they say also that they want to build drones to deliver packages, you know, kind of logistics, what we were saying before, but so far in their website, there's no prototypes. It's just them talking, but there's no real tangible thing. Then we have also Iron Environment, which these ones, they produce drones, but are mostly just centered towards military use. And finally, we also have Parrot, which they also produce drones again, but these ones are more centered towards uh, fire extinguishment. And as they have thermal, you know, detectors to detect where there might be still, you know, fire burning or, or something. So in terms of competitors, as I said, the biggest challenges that I see for a hang at the moment are basically Airbus, Boeing and Lockheed Martin as they are very large companies, but also looking into the future, maybe Amazon, maybe Google, maybe Apple could enter this space. They are massive companies with a lot of money. And for instance, Amazon could very well use these drones to deliver packages at home. They could basically save on having employees driving cars around. Um, I don't know, but basically these are my main concerns. Now though, it is time for me to give my opinion on the company. And as I already said at the beginning, I really like it. I like a lot the industry. I think that it has a massive potential and Ehang is already very well positioned within it. At the same time though, it's also at relatively early stages. So it's something that we need to monitor in the future and also to see which other new competitors enter the market. Despite this, and even if the stock price has already surged a 1,200% in the past six months, especially these past few days over rumors that maybe Volkswagen wants to acquire them or do a partnership, I do think that this could become an incredibly large company in 10, 15 or 20 years, especially if they could continue to perform as they have been doing. And especially and very importantly, if the governments start to put more regulations or to favor more the autonomous aerial market, which offers just a great opportunity. So while the price might not be cheap currently, what I think with this stock, if you are in, it's basically for the long run. And I th think to myself, where will this company be in 10, 15 or 20 years? And I can only imagine it being bigger or larger than right now and being worth much more. For this reason, I basically bought some shares at $75 each around that. And I'm planning on adding more gradually even if I don't lower my cost average on that because I do see a lot of potential and I mean again for the long run. In any case, remember that I'm no financial advisor, that I just share with you in this video my thoughts, my research on the stock and that you should always do your own due diligence before investing in this or any stock out there. 
In any case, I hope that you enjoyed the video, that this helped you in getting to know some more insights or things about Ehang. And now, after everything that you have seen, what are your thoughts on the company? Do you already own some shares of it? Will you be investing in it? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed. And as always, see you next time.